Hello everyone, I am Amiya. Welcome to the third session of SEED. Here we will discuss about germination and what are the conditions required and different experiment related to germination. Now after the seed is formed, when we soak it in water or we put it in the soil, what happens? It germinates. Small white color structures come out. The process is called as germination. Now what is germination? Process of formation of a seedling developed from an embryo is called as germination. Now formation of a seedling. What is seedling? Seedling is the stage where the growth of the plant becomes independent of reserve food material. So what is germination? When the germination is going on, the cotyledon is still intact and it takes nutrition from it. But when the plant is not dependent on the reserve food material from the seed and it becomes completely independent for food, then it is called as a seedling. So the phase between the seed and the seedling, the pro stage is called as germination. Now what are the conditions required for germination? First one is water. Why? First one is water as after taking the water or after getting the water the seed swells because the nutrients and the enzymes which are present inside the seed when they get water they swell and they start dissolving and when the reserve food material dissolve and the enzymes get the water and they become active. So two things happens when the water enters inside the seed, the seed swells and the seed coat ruptures. After the seed coat will rupture and the seed will swell by taking the water or imbibing the water, the chemical reactions will start. How the chemical reactions will start at the reserve food material is present and enzymes are present. The reserve food material will dissolve and enzyme will start acting on it acting on the cotyledon and the endosperm. The enzymes will act on the reserve food material that is present in the cotyledon and the endosperm so that they can dissolve and they give the nutrients to the developing embryo. Next, temperature. Always temperature is to be maintained. The temperature in which the seedling or the seed can germinate is 25 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. This is the most active temperature as the temperature is very active or temperature leads to the process of germination. So the temperature range is called as optimum temperature. Below this the, the seed will remain dormant as no activity will occur below the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And just above 35 degrees Celsius, it is very high temperature and it may destroy the delicate tissues as the seed contains very soft tissues for, of the embryo. So it may destroy. And second thing, all the reserve food material and the enzymes are mostly enzymes are made up of protein. At that high temperature, they will disintegrate or degenerate. So, the, at the high temperature, the seed may destroy and very low, low temperature, the seed will remain dormant or inactive. The third condition required is availability of the oxygen. As the seed is growing, as the seed is growing in size and it, some activities are going on, all the activity require energy. And, and we get energy by the process of respiration. What is respiration? Intake of oxygen intake of oxygen for the degradation of the glucose so that we will get the energy. So, what is, so more amount of oxygen is required as growth process is going on. As more amount of energy is required, respiration should be done well and respiration requires oxygen. So, these are the three factors which are responsible for the germination of seed, water, optimum temperature and oxygen. Now we will study about some experiment which will prove that these conditions are very vital for the process of germination. The first experiment is about proof that water is necessary for germination. What we have to do? First take beaker A 
beaker B. In both the beaker, we have to take cotton wool. In one beaker, we have to take wet cotton wool. And in another beaker, we have to take dry cotton wool without water. Here with water and here without water. When water is present and both the beakers are open. Both the beakers are open here. They are not closed. And as both the beakers are open, so air can enter. Air can enter and water is previously present. So in this condition, air is available but water is present. As the water is present, the seed will show the germination process. But here, air is present, but water is not present. So, from here we can conclude that for germination, water is required. As here, without water, the germination process is not happening. So, we can conclude that water is important for germination. Now, we will go for the second condition. Proof that suitable Temperature is required. How we can prove this? By changing the temperature. One bar, one flask, we will take wet cotton wool. Here also we will take wet cotton wool. Both are open. And here we will take some seeds. And one beaker or beaker A, we will keep the beaker A in ordinary room temperature and beaker B in a refrigerator. When we will keep the beaker A in an ordinary room which will get the optimum temperature because water is previously available as it is open so air can enter here and in the ordinary room the temperature is maintained. So in this condition we will see the germination process. But here what will happen? Just think water is available, air is available but as it is kept in refrigerator, the temperature is very low. As the temperature is very low, the seed will not show any germination. So from here we can conclude that temperature is necessary for germination. Okay. Now the third experiment which will prove that oxygen is necessary for germination. Here take two beakers. Both are closed. In one beaker, we will take water with wet cotton wool. The previous setup only, wet cotton wool is taken. In one beaker, we have to hang a, we have to hang a water test tube filled with water. And in another test tube, we have to take pyrogallic acid. Pyrogallic acid is a oxygen absorber. So, what will happen? Whatever oxygen which is present inside the beaker, it will be absorbed by the pyrogallic acid. We have to be careful. No pyrogallic acid should drop on the cotton or on the seed. So, after some days, we can see that the beaker which is present with the water, it will show germination. Okay. Why? Water is present here and some amount of oxygen we can get from the atmosphere as it is the normal atmospheric condition. But here as pyrogallic acid is the oxygen absorber, it will absorb all the oxygen from the beaker. So here we can see no germination or no changes in the seed. So in the normal condition with oxygen, with oxygen we can see the germination whereas without oxygen we can prove that no seed will show any germination. So, oxygen is necessary for germination. Now, the next experiment which is three bean seed experiment. Here, we can prove that air, water, temperature all are required. Temperature, we cannot prove it here but air, air and water, we can prove it in a single experiment. So, how? Take a beaker, open beaker with a slide. Here in the slide, we have to fix three beans in, tie it with a thread. One seed should remain above the water level. One seed 
just in the middle position where it will half in the half will be dipped in the water and half will remain in the air and the third one completely dipped inside the water keep it for one to two days after two to three days what you will see that the above seed the seed which is in the air which is completely dry we can see no change there and at the bottom the last seed number three also we can see there is no change seed number one and seed number three has no change as three is also dipped under water now why as the seed which is completely above and without any water it cannot it can get oxygen no doubt but it will not get water as it is one factor is absent so no germination next condition as it is half dipped in water so it will get water as it is half in the air so it will get oxygen also so in the condition number two we can see germination now come to the third condition oxygen at the last condition water is available plentifully plentifully but oxygen is not available oxygen will be available only a little as water as the water contains a little bit of dissolved oxygen but compared to the second one we can see no germination in the third first and in comparison to the second first and third will show no gen germination so from here we can conclude that for germination we need air water and perfect temperature for germination now after this we will go for what is germination and what are the types of germination there are three types of germination epigeal germination hypogeal germination and viviparous germination what do you mean by epigeal epi means above the ground when the germination occurs and the shoot part and the cotyledon comes out of the ground or above the ground it is called as epigeal germination second condition hypogeal germination when the cotyledon or the seed never comes above the ground and it always remains below the ground hypo means below below the ground then it is called as a hypogeal germination viviparous germination it is called as produced live one still intact in the tree or the parent plant inside the fruit so this one we will discuss later first we will discuss epigeal and hypogeal germination here you can see this one is the seed after the germination first the root comes out after the root comes out you can see the green color part which is shoot part this shoot part is pushed above the ground okay with the cotyledon or the seed now as it is pushed above the ground now after some days we can see this type of condition here you can see see that this one is the cotyledon this is a dicot plant so epigeal condition mostly seen in dicots and here the portion which is below the cotyledon is called as what hypo below the cotyledon so hypocotyle and the region which is present above the cotyledon is called as epicotyle now this is the germination condition so when the cotyledons comes out of the ground or above the ground then it is called as epigeal germination in it is mostly seen in dicots why it occurs as the hypocotyle as the hypocotyle elongates faster as the hypocotyle elongates faster so the hypocotyle comes out with the cotyledon this is why this is called as epigeal germination now come to the hypogeal germination hypogeal germination what happens here here you can see the seed here the seed first the root starts the cotyledon remains under the ground and the shoot comes out like this the cotyledon always remains inside the ground it never comes out above the ground so it is called as hypogeal germination hypo means below the ground the germination occurs now if you will differentiate between the epigeal germination and hypogeal germination epigeal germination cotyledons pushed above the ground you can see above the ground cotyledons are always under the ground here 
hypocotyl elongates this one elongates faster so that it will push the cotyledon so hypocotyl elongates faster here and epicotyl elongates faster here here epicotyl 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 will grow as such without pushing the cotyledon as it is present above the cotyledon so it will grow fast without changing the cotyledon position so it is seen usually in the dicots and it is seen in monocots now last we will study about viviparous germination viviparous germination you can see the germination occurs till the fruit is intact with the parent plant you can see this one is the parent plant and mostly this is seen in mangroves like rhizopora sonaritia etc viviparous seed germinates inside the fruit while it is still attached to the plant so here with the plant the fruit is attached the fruit germinates here this one is the hypocotyl and this one is the root or the radical and in this condition it falls off from the plant and it will fall in the water as the mangrove plants are seen in water areas here water inside the water it will fall as such the radical will give rise to root and the hypocotyl will germinate to give the plant so this is called as the viviparous germination so in this chapter we have completed what is seed what is the process of germin germination after germination seedling occurs what are the different types of seed what are the different types of germination and this completes our chapter thank you